today we start with this special choice of the direction of descent where dk is negative of the gradient of f, f of x k. It is clear that if grad of f x k is not equal to 0, then norm of grad f x k is not equal to 0 and grad f x k into d k in this particular case comes down to So, this of course, is strictly less than 0. Now, why such a method would be called the method of steep phase descent? If you look at this thing, so what you have here is, you want to multiply this quantity. So, this is So, why, why this choice, the, my question is this, why the choice of minus grad f x k equal to d k is called that direction of steepest descent. So, we are now uh, start going to study various types of uh, con algorithms depending on various types of descent directions we choose that is various types of line search methods. We are going to study Newton's method, we are going to study quasi Newton's method and so on. So, uh, with of course, several examples. Now, in the last uh, one I have given you that this example of Rosenbrock function which you will see, so we can apply that on the steepest descent technique, uh, we can use the steepest descent technique uh, on that and see what it illustrates. Now, now theta is of course, the angle between grad f x k, so d, this is a descent direction. So, this is a di direction of descent. So, this is strictly negative. Now, even if it is this is strictly negative, what is the most negative value of this? The most negative value of this is nothing but when cos theta takes the most negative value, because here are these are fixed. Cos theta takes the most negative value when cos theta is equal to minus 1, right. So, if cos theta is minus 1, which means what? When cos theta is minus 1, cos theta equal to minus 1 gives the most negative value of this, right. Then cos theta equal to minus 1 implies that this and this angle theta the implies that theta is pi 180 degrees which implies that d k is nothing but in this direction, d k d k becomes minus grad f x k. This is my d k now. So, d k of course, the angle has to be 180, so it will, it will come in this direction. So, that is why it is called the direction of steepest descent, because the value of this it becomes most negative when I choose d k equal to minus grad f x k, because this corresponds to the minimum, the angle for which cos theta value is minimum, right. Now, this is uh, not the only uh, issue with steepest descent method. The question is, is the steepest descent method very good, whether it is very fast? We need to think about all this. How does the steepest descent method move? That is, uh, suppose I have an x, suppose this is the actual minimum, the unconstant minimizer of the function and this is my current chosen point x k. Now, I have to find a direction which will take me somewhere here, then possibly it should take me along this direction, some this direction in this way. This is the way 
time search method would work, this is x k plus 1 and so on and we will move towards x bar, that that is the basic idea. Then this is my d k and this is my d k plus 1, the direction of descents, but in the case of steepest descent method, a very important thing to note is that the direction of descent d k and the direction of descent d k plus 1 is perpendicular to each other. That is, if you for example, consider minimizing the function x square plus y square over x y in R 2. If you note this, then you see here is 0, x bar equal to 0 is 0, 0 is the actual minimum minimizer then what you draw around 0 are level curves. So, level curves, level curves is for this particular case is a set of all x y in R 2 such that x s square plus y square is equal to some c square or some constant k. Okay. So, this is called level c. Now, this level curve, so this is of radius c. So, you can have so you can have level curves like this, it would be level curves like this smaller and smaller. Now, the interesting fact is that if you are here in any of the any x x k, suppose you are you are on any one of the level curves, at any time you will be on one of the level curves, which is obvious, because if you know x, you know you will see what is x square plus y square, if you know the x y, so you will know what is x square plus y square, so you will know what at on what level curve you are in. So, the level curve, you are on a level curve x k, now from here you move to one point x k plus 1. This is x k plus 1. You see what happens now, you cannot move in the once it comes here. In the case of steepest descent, you will the next movement would be in the direction perpendicular to d k, the next movement would be in a di another direction perpendicular to d k, the next could be like this, and it could be like this, then it would be like this, then like this. See the direction of descent cannot be in this direction because then it will increase the function value. So it is decreasing the function value, but you see this zigzagging pr procedure, this sort of uh, procedure where you are trying to maintain the perpendicularity that every point it is perpendicular. So this d k plus 1 is perpendicular with d k, uh, d k plus 1 and d k plus 2 are perpendicular and so on. So this zigzagging procedure slows down this algorithm very much, though, though there is an inherent simplicity in this algorithm, we do not tend to get its benefit because it slows down because of maintaining this zigzag business. So, what I have to show is, what I have claimed that this is 0. If you look at this thing, I can tell you that, but if you look at this thing just straight, it will not, it is not so easy to prove this. One has to come through a very different route. Now, what we have been doing here is, we have been considering this function from R to R at the given k and we have, now to find this alpha, the required step length, our main job was to minimize. phi alpha over alpha strictly bigger than 0. Now, you see you are actually faced with a constraint optimization problem, which you have not uh, studied till now in this course. So, how do I find an alpha, which will minimize phi alpha, if there is one such. Your first step is to take the derivative equal to 0, you might say okay, this is not an unconstrained problem, this is a constant problem, alpha is strictly bigger than 0, but alpha is strictly bigger than 0 means we are just considering the 
positive real line and that is an open set. So, if you minimize over the open set and if you minimize over the whole space, then the say optimality conditions, necessary optimality conditions are the same. That is what we really have to do in order to find a step length. So, if alpha star is my solution or alpha k is my solution and phi dash alpha k is equal to 0, because the required step length alpha k is the solution of is a solution. So, if alpha k is a solution of this problem, then alpha k is my required step length. So, that is that I want the next point to be x k plus alpha k d k. So, phi dash alpha k is equal to 0, because that is the solution of this problem. So, which means that by definition if I want to take the gradient, that gradient of f of x k plus alpha k d k into d k is equal to 0. But this what is this alpha k x k plus alpha k d k, because the solution of this problem would be considered the step length value. So, the alpha which solves this problem is the step length value at the kth stage. So, this point obviously, you know that we write x k plus 1 as x k plus alpha k d k, because alpha k is the solution of the uh, of this uh, problem. It minimizes the function value on this ray in, in that is a ray in the direction of d k. So, this means this we have nothing but grad of f x k plus 1 into d k is equal to 0, but note that what is grad of f x k plus 1 by the steepest descent method, this is nothing but minus d k plus 1 and hence this is 0. So, d k plus 1 into d k is also 0 proving the fact that we are always in the perpendicular mode that the directions are perpendicular to each other. Okay. So, well we are now going to get into slightly more uh, technical issues, right. Uh, we are going to talk about rates of convergence. So, rates of convergence of the steepest descent method. So, what do you mean by the rate of convergence? Rate of convergence is some sort of ratio, which gives you an understanding of how fast you are progressing towards the solution. So, let me just rub the board and let me just So, uh, when you have this, uh, so what I mean by this term rate of convergence of the steepest descent method, you will find this very much in most numerical optimization books. See, I am actually running an algorithm, which is generating these iterates. and which we want to converge, we want this to converge, this sequence of iterates to converge to the true solution x star. 
So, when k is very large, we can choose one of these elements from the sequence and we can say we are sufficiently happy with such a solution. So, what one has to do is to find the distance between x k and x star and the distance between x k plus 1 and x star. And one is to find the relation between them that is really looking at the ratio which is basically the relative change. If this is less than some constant, so and then if the constant is less than 1, then we say that as we are uh, sorry, this is x k. So, if the constant is less than 1, then we say that this is moving at a linear rate, distance is usually given by the norm, then it, we say that it is moving at a linear rate and if the square of the norm of this if the distance square is less than some constant into distance square, then we said we have a quadratic convergence. In the sense what we are trying to show is that we are trying to ascertain that what is the distance between x k plus 1 and x star in relative to the distance between x k and x star. Is x k plus 1 nearer to x star than x k? So, these are these are the questions that one asks. So, so this this thing determines the speed at which the algorithm moves. For the steepest descent method, this is very, very slow, but we will consider the steepest descent method now for a very special class of problems called the convex strongly quadratic programming problem. So, we will consider the study of steepest descent for strongly convex quadratic problem. So, here we will consider where q is a symmetric positive definite matrix. Uh, we will explain why we are calling all this. So, we will diverge, we will just take a little detour into convexity right now. Matrix. Of course, I expect everybody knows the definition of positive semi definiteness. So, we can uh, look into the thing a little bit in, in a little bit more in detail. So, this is the function we have written on the board. And we have claimed that this is a strongly convex quadratic optimization problem. So, we have spoken a bit about convexity in the very beginning and we have said that how does a convex function looks like when it is differentiable and that for a convex function every local minimum is global and hence we need to show why this is a strongly convex function. In fact, uh, we had to, we have to do a little, make a little definition of what strong convexity is and so that is our first task now before we try to analyze the steepest descent method for this particularly simple looking quadratic optimization problem. So, we just take a detour, maybe I should write here detour. We 
we should take a detour and let us talk about strong convexity. So, what is strong convexity uh, means? So, you have I think if I just go back and try to show you the definition of the convex function. So, here is the definition of a convex function. So, please keep on looking at the definition of a convex function as we write down the definition of a convex function here. So, a strongly convex function. I am not going to write too much of details, but this is what I am going to write. So, this quantity which is uh, this one sorry plus. Now, this is a non negative quantity. So, what you have that this thing is obviously bigger than this little part this part because this is a non negative quantity. So, of course, here lambda is between 0 and 1 and x y is in any r n strongly convex let me write implies convex, but convex need not imply strongly convex. Of course, you can say yeah it is already clear from the name. See what we are expecting in this case of strong convexity that f is not only this part is not only bigger than this, this is bigger than some quantity which is bigger than this part has more it is much more stronger the notion. So, of course, here rho is strictly bigger than 0 called the modulus of strong convexity and the rho has to remain same for every x y this is something you have to know. So, f x equal to x square is strongly convex. f x equal to mod x is convex not strongly convex. Okay. So, these two examples are for this assertion. So, let us look at more or less at the quadratic function every linear function the linear part every linear function is both concave and convex concave is of course the negative of convex if f is convex minus f is concave. So, this part is always convex, but if you add two convex functions you will generate one another one more one more convex function. So, for a strongly convex function suppose you have taken q is positive semi definite. then f is convex f x is half x q x where q is positive definite then f is strongly convex. Then f is strongly convex. That is for a strongly convex function the Hessian is always positive definite that is the idea the Hessian matrix if there is a twice continuously differentiable convex function whose Hessian, Hessian matrix if it is strongly convex then its Hessian matrix is always positive definite and if the Hessian matrix is positive definite we can say clearly that it is strongly it is definitely it will be strictly convex in this case and but also be strongly convex that it will satisfy this. In fact, if a now, if f is differentiable then 
then you will have a strong convex function this is to be true for any pair x y one can take rho by 2 also it does not matter 2. So, this is what we get. So, grad f x equal to 0 would imply or grad x bar equal to 0 would imply x is a strict global minimum. So, if I want to find the minimum of this problem, so what is the mean? How do I find the minimum of this problem? So here, because this is a convex, strongly convex quadratic optimization problem, the minimum, which would be unique in this case, and also for any strongly convex function, it will be unique and it will be a strict global minimum. So in this case, if I take grad of f x, if I want to find the solution. See here just grad f x bar equal to 0 would give me the solution since this is a convex function. So, if for a convex function every critical point is a global minimum a thing which we have told few classes back and so here you have this which means you have q of x bar plus b is equal to 0 sorry minus b equal to 0 or q x bar is equal to b, but since q is positive definite it is also invertible and that would imply that x bar equal to q inverse b and that is the solution to this problem. Of course, then why I am going to use steepest descent method to solve such a simple looking problem, but though it is simple looking from the mathematical point of view, but there are a lot of computational issues which can make taking the inverse of a matrix very computationally intensive and also computationally expensive because a lot of data has to be stored and so we cannot always use this direct techniques to get an answer or a solution to a problem of this sort and that is why we have to resort to iterative methods by which in several steps can solve the problem and thus we'll start with uh, studying the case where we are looking for the function phi alpha so, so, we are now looking at the quadratic case. Now, what happens here? Here, this is nothing but because we are using the steepest descent. Now, how do I find a to find us to find a step length to find a step length? We first put phi dash alpha is equal to 0. Once I put phi dash alpha equal to 0 in this particular case, let me now write down the function value phi alpha. Particular case is written as half of. Now you have this minus your job here is to compute phi dash alpha equal to 0 and this would implies some alpha star solution of this which I leave as homework is given as So, here 
because the function is convex quadratic any critical point is a global minimum because the function is strongly convex the global minimum must be unique. So, the unique the critical point that you get is your unique global minimum. So, this is my exact line search here actually I have to put alpha k is this. So, alpha k is now computed in this form. So, alpha star is my alpha k. So, this is my required step length. Hence, my iterative scheme now would look like this. So, I am replacing the alpha. So, this is my iterative scheme for solving the quad convex strongly convex quadratic optimization problem. So, instead of see what I have done, I have now avoided the computation of the minimum. I have now avoided the computation of the minimum by using this not sorry not the minimum the inverse. I have avoided the complete computation of the inverse of q by taking the iteration form iteration in this form. In fact, let us introduce what is called the q norm of x or the elliptic norm. So, if q is a PD matrix, q is a positive definite matrix. Then we define the elliptic norm or the Q norm this is what you have. Now, because you know that if x star is my actual solution then Q x star is equal to B if x star is the actual solution. then one can show half of so this is what you observe so this norm you see is uh, measuring the difference between current value say xk and the x. So, if I so this this difference this particular norm is measuring how far is the current or objective value from the actual I mean optimal objective value and that is measured by this q norm of the current objective current iterate minus the solution which we really do not know because solution is actually q inverse b and we do not know we do not want to find it by taking the inverse. As I told you, it is very important to know the ratio of the distance between x k plus 1 and x star divided by x the distance of x k with x star. What one can prove? This will be this proof of this will be given in your FAQ at the end of the course, a template would be given attached to the course file, and that you can see later on where the detailed proof of this whole thing will be given. So, this depends on an inequality called Kantarovic inequality and our course means beyond the scope of our class to really go on proving such things though I would be happy to do so. This distance that is 
distance in terms of this elliptic norm, the distance of x k plus 1 from x star is This is what you have. Now, this uh, lambda 1 is a positive definite matrix. Or Eigen values of Q. So, here we have a quadratic norm, quadratic convergence with respect to the Q norm. Sorry, not a quadratic convergence, um, I would say a linear convergence with respect to the Q norm, because what would we have is now x k plus 1 minus x star divided by x k minus x star is less than equal to lambda n minus lambda 1 by lambda n plus lambda 1 and this would be anyway strictly less than 1. So, here this, this by this has a constant which is strictly less than 1, then we at least in the q norm. So, this is called q linear rate of convergence and this rate, rate of convergence is very slow. So, for the quadratic optimization problem, what we have is called the q linear rate of convergence. I had just told you that Here I have told you that if this constant is strictly less than 1, then this is called this then x k, this sequence is going toward x k x star at a linear rate. So, so what you have shown for the quadratic case that we are going towards x star, we are going towards the solution at a linear rate, but it is called q linear convergence or q we can say call it q linear, we call or just call it the linear rate of convergence with respect to the ellipsoidal norm. So, with this idea we stop here and uh, we would continue doing this uh, studying this basic algorithms uh, by doing the Newton's method. But let us go back for a minute to the Rosenbrock function that I had given you from the book of Nosedal and Wright and let me see to what extent one can discuss about it. So, yesterday we gave a assignment which where we are considering a function of this form. So, if you take the gradient of this one, if you take the del f del x 1. So, it is 100 sorry to, to 200 x 2 minus x 1 square into minus 2 x 1, this is one thing and del f del x 2 is sorry plus 2 into 1 minus x 1 into minus. So, this is your del f del x 1 and del f del x 2 is nothing but here this is. So, if you put both equal to 0 what would happen? You see if I put both x 2 and x 1 equal to 1 both are equal to 0. So, x 2 equal to 1 1 is the only possible solution of this. So, I am asking you to solve this at again at home which I will not solve. So, x bar equal to 1 1 is the only solution of this problem. Now, is the only critical minimum. So, 
so so here if you try to solve this this will be equal to if you try to solve this thing you see 1 1 is a solution and this 1 1 is the only local minimizer you can calculate the hesian at this point and the hesian matrix would be positive definite at that point and it is not a global minimizer that you have to check out that this is a local minimizer and not a global minimizer so you calculate out and check if i put this one so i have a x2 equal to x1 square so if i put x2 equal to x1 square this will become zero so from here i'll get x1 equal to 1 so once i get x1 equal to 1 i'll also get x2 equal to 1 so 1 1 is the only solution of this thing and but still the critical point that we get is not a global minimum it is a local minimum it is very important to know that this function is not a convex function it is a non convex function it is a differentiable but this rosenbrock function is a non convex function so i would like you to try this at home so for example if i put uh, 1 1 here if i put 1 1 then i x2 is 1 and x1 is 1 then i get 0 of course this is a positive non negative function this value is always non negative for any x1 and x2 so 0 is the minimum and that zero value is attained at 1 1 and you, you, oh, you know, this is the whole square this is whole square so 0 0 is a minimum uh, 0 is or 1 1 is 1 1 is where you are obtaining 0 right now the question is whether that is a global minimum so if you find so now if you put x2 equal to 1 x1 equal to 1 then now if you put x everything is equal to 0 you get 1 sorry it, it is not only a local minimizer i think i made a mistake x 1 1 is not a local minimizer it is in fact a in fact because the hesian is positive definite you can definitely conclude that it is a strict local minimizer but because you see that this function for any x1 and x2 f of x1 x2 is greater than equal to 0 so but if i put x1 equal to 1 and x2 equal to 1 the function value is becoming 0 so which means that uh, this is a not just a local minimizer it is a global minimizer and it is a strict global minimizer sorry i made a mistake i think i was thinking this as minus 1 but okay so here is an interesting example of a non convex function for which you can attain a global minimizer at this point 1 1 and uh, the steepest descent method on this would become very slow there are a lot of all the textbooks usually give examples where the steepest descent method on this class of functions work very very slowly so with this i'll end the talk today and tomorrow we'll start discussing newton's method thank you very much